Hey, what's up team? That Logic Pro guy here. In this third video, we're going to cover Apple Loops third party components. Thus far, we've covered the default saving path. So every time you hit Command S, these sessions are going to go somewhere by default unless you tell Logic to send them somewhere else, like your desktop or what have you. The second file path was under Macintosh HD users, your name music the audio music apps folder contains articulation settings channel strip settings my goal is to give you all of the file paths so you know what to look for today we're going to cover the audio folder so this is inside of your hard drive library audio and this is where we have very important folders for example the apple loops folder it's not a good idea to delete anything from here these aren't user loops you should just leave these B. Every time you do re-index your loops, this is where you can find that updated file. I have covered impulse responses in the channel, and so I'll link that in the description. But after that, we have a bit of a graveyard. These folders seem to be inherited from days past when Logic Pro was exclusively a sequencer. It seems like we're past this period, and we have a lot more compatible class-compliant drivers. And so I'll skip past these, but if we go to plugins, this right here is very important. In Logic Pro, we use components files, and so if you ever need to delete a plugin, let's say it's acting up, you can delete it from here, and your session should be able to open up properly. Every time you download a third-party plugin, this is where it's going to be contained. Another hack, if you can't seem to open up a session, is to hold control after you open up logic so i'll do that now i'll click on the icon and then hold control immediately after you will be met with this prompt do you want to launch the core audio driver this is so crucial guys so please take note of this if your session isn't opening up it's most likely because there's a corrupt plugin and so sometimes you don't want logic pro to read all of the various plugins so you can choose to launch with audio core driver that's the default behavior if you don't launch the core audio driver, essentially none of the plugins are going to work. Logic Pro stock plugins and third party plugins and launching without audio units will basically disable all third party plugins. So I'll cancel this startup action and I'll open up this session right here. And so if I go into the mixer, you can see that everything but the Logic Pro stock plugins are working. And let's say, I don't know, this plugin wasn't working. I can simply remove it and then I can start this whole process all over again. Quit Logic Pro. This time I will open up the session using Core Audio Driver, so I'll just double click. All right, you can see Logic scanning all of the plugins within the session and now everything should work accordingly. Now, since we're talking about Apple loops. I think most of you know that we have the sound packs over here on the right hand side. We've got so many different options in terms of different audio files, different drummer loops. A lot of these are inherited from GarageBand or Final Cut. I'm going to make a video on that later. If you're ever missing any loops, you're going to have to go into Logic Pro Sound Library. Let's go ahead and open up the Sound Library Manager. Now I have everything installed, but for whatever reason, if you're missing something, you can go ahead and update things here. If you ever wanted to send the 63.55 gigabytes over to an external drive, you would have to go to Sound Library, relocate Sound Library. So there's a big ecosystem going on here with the Apple loops, all of the sound packs. If we're looking at a software instrument track and I open up the library, we have these great sound packs in here as well. Now you're not going to find that with audio tracks, but you will find it with software instrument tracks. So all of the sounds that are given to you are creating the library that you have. There's so much to get into with this incredible program. But something else that you really should know about is the plugin manager. And I'll go ahead and hit Command P. You could find that under Logic Pro Settings Plugin Manager. And this is important because if for whatever reason a plugin isn't connecting, it's not, it doesn't seem to 
to work with Logic Pro, you're going to want to check to make sure that it's even in here to begin with. So you can check by manufacturer. I can click on this compatibility tab. And if I hover all the way down, you can see that GoFoss is currently not compatible. So now I need to go to their website. I need to make sure that I update a current version. And then I should reset and rescan selection. If you ever want to do a full scan, make sure that you hit this button here, full audio unit reset. Another way to go about that is to clear what's called your cache list. If you want to find this, I'm going to hit command I here, and this is inside of the users folder, your name, library cache. You would simply just move all of this stuff over to the desktop or to the trash. And then the next time you open up logic pro logic is going to rescan all of the plugins inside of this folder plugins components. So the last thing I'd like to talk about are the user loops. This we can find under computer, users, your name, library, audio, user loops. I talk about this in another video, but if you don't see your library folder here, it's because it's hidden. A quick way to access it is to hold option, go into the Go library here, and then just click on library. Then you go to audio right here, and here are my user Apple loops. So these are loops that I actually created myself. So if I go to the loop browser here and I click on sound packs, you can see that I have my own distinct loops. I do this really for efficiency. There's a lot of, you know, clap sounds that I particularly like or, or cymbals or reverse sounds. And so I just like to have this on deck at the ready. I can either just simply have that as a placeholder or I just use it because I'm trying to move quickly. And so one thing that needs to be said about this is um, let's go to the very top here. You can see I have, you know, MIDI, two bar region. I don't know, maybe let's say I wanted to change that verbiage for whatever reason. I can simply go to this user loop single files folder and I can change the name. Now I'm actually not going to see the name change immediately because you do have to re-index loops. So that's very important. I like to stay as organized as I can. Obviously, there isn't a perfect system anywhere in the world, but if I can, you know, find kicks quickly or percussion or risers, then that's exactly what I want to do. If you haven't created custom loops within Logic Pro, I highly recommend you start doing it. One of the many benefits, for example, if you create software instruments, I'll drag this one in. This is one of my favorite percussion virtual instruments. And so now I don't even have to, you know, go through the pain of creating a track and telling it which software instrument I want. If I go into the inspector I, you can see that here's contact and instantiated is Shimmer Shake by In Session Audio. So that's definitely one of the benefits of creating these Apple user loops. So again, those user loops are going to be found within your computer, users, your name, library, audio apple loops all right thank you for watching if there's anything else you would like for me to cover let me know I do have a couple more videos on the series so stay tuned i'll see you on the next one